Now you can listen now. Okay, now it's working. I was saying that welcome everybody. Welcome to another Zebras and Jewelry Thursday. My name is Nacho Riesco and here we are going to use Zebras for jewelry design. So let's open Zebras. Uh, welcome. Let me check in my side that everything is working fine. Let me know if you can listen to me and uh, everything is working fine in your on your side hey Fector, how you doing welcome back again a pleasure for me too that you are here watching the streaming uh hello marcin hoops just tell me that my voice is sounding good maybe the music is not too loud and I like to sculpt with a, a bit of the background music. Hello, you. I'm sorry if I am pronouncing your names wrong. I'll try. I try to do my best because sometimes your nicknames are difficult to to pronounce for me. Okay, let's just start. Let's just start today. As I was saying before, Thursday is about uh, zebras and jewelry. The theme of today, we are going to create a traditional, well, I, I say traditional because all of you, it's a very well known design based from uh, the Egyptian empire, the typical, this kind of uh, scattered uh, kind of designs. There are many. There are many have been making some searchings on the on Pinterest as usual. You, you can hear. And there are many, many different. Many. You can find many different versions. This kind of winged uh, beetle or a scarab that we are going to create or we are trying to create a design based on this concept. As usual, I'm not going to copy any existing design, so so that's the reason why I have here a bunch of different pictures from real bugs and from different jewelry pieces, trying to grab different concepts and idea. And during the streamings, we are going to develop the design. At the same time, we are going to be in the sculpting the design and we, without nothing. Uh, a specific in mind, we, as usual, we are going to develop the design during the streamings based from one main idea. In this case, we're going to start today is going to be the first streaming about this design where we are going to create a beetle, Egyptian beetle or, or this Egyptian scarab. I don't know, maybe it could be the same beetle and scarab, I think. 
and uh, let's see what we get uh, during the streamings. Normally, I used to be around three streamings with the same design. Then, when we complete the design, I start a new one. So today is the first day for the new one of this new pack of three streamings. You leave your questions, your comments. I'm going to try to keep as more attention as possible to the to your comments so send your questions comments suggestions because one of the things that i like to be here with you as captain is you are also able to give me ideas or to fix things that i am not making well or whatever you do try to make the, the life as more interactive as possible but, uh, have a nice stream. Thank you very much. Midfield Joseph, good morning. Good morning to you too. Here is where I am. I live in Spain. I think probably all of you know it. Here it is in the evening, 6 p.m. My, my, my evening, not my morning. Maybe so. Another thing that I love to be here with you is that uh, many people for, from many different uh, countries and it's amazing to share this time with you sharing knowledge and comments on or, or and trying to share my knowledge for what I'm doing and about serious okay let's start working so when I the idea is to create a, I forgot to open the the, 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 the this application what I, that I love which allows me to paint on the screen. I don't want to update it. Epic Pen. Let's close it. So I'm, the idea that I have is to create a brooch, a kind of a mix of a brooch and a pendant. So it, we are going to be able to wear the piece as a brooch or as, as a pendant. For that, we are going to develop a system on the back like this one with two loops or maybe we only want one loop. For the chain and on the back we are going to put um, the needle system for, for the brooch. Something is bugging you about those reference pictures. What kind of bugging are you having? Or what kind of problems? What's, or are you referring to the bug itself? <laughs> I think you are you are saying that because we are going to create that bug. So, but it is not a bug. This it's a winged. It's kind of bug, traditional Egyptian or based on ancient Egyptian uh, designs. Okay, let's see. The first step that I take when I start a um, pendant or a brooch, I use the plane. I start most of the time. I can say ninety percent of the time with from a uh, plane from a 3d plane is not a plain 3d you know it is flat it's like a piece of paper and i use this as a template to set up the measurement of the pendant or, or the brooch in this case for a pendant or for a brooch the most important the measurement is the height from top to bottom so grabbing the grabbing the the caliper and trying to don't make something huge or something big difficult to wear and comfortable so i think in my opinion i like the small pieces the miniatures and maybe around 20 or 25 millimeter it's going to be a good idea let's set it up to 25 millimeter high and wide maybe it's going to be almost a square it's going to have more or less square proportions so let's say let's start from from 25 millimeters. So let's uh, make a polymer. Another uh, step that I take is I turn on the necessary uh, um, grit from the floor. In this case, this is going to be the front view. And then I'm going to go to the draw menu. And let's see, let's put this. This is the problem about this. Okay. Draw an elevation to zero like this and now i know 
where it is in the center of the design. I split the design into four halves. So to start the design, it's to start having a reference. That's uh, what it's the half on the left, half on the right, half on the top, or half on the bottom. So that when we are sculpting, when we are going to start distributing the different elements, and knowing that we are having a balance uh, uh, design or balance uh, piece. So let's set it up to 25 millimeters. Go into the zip plugins using the scale master. Now it is two by two by zero millimeters. So let's say it's going to be important to turn this on. So to keep it proportion, to keep the proportions So 25 recipes of tool. And now we have a square, a template of 25 by 25 millimeter, right? 25 by 25 millimeter. It's going to be necessary to make the, the floor a little bit bigger. So let's go to the draw and grid size, a little bit bigger. And now this is going to be the starting point. Let's save this as a starting point. This is going to be this card up design number one. This card up design number one and we're gonna start so we know that we have 25 millimeters or everything that we are going to use as a different sub tools when we are putting different elements we we know now the limits so 25 millimeter tall 25 millimeter wide um what work let's stop yeah you're, you're right uh, for now, I started helping my friend by providing him with 3D model for casting. Cool. He's a hand cutter. Oh, you, I was curious to know what kinds of measurements question you should ask the hand cutter. But uh, are you referring to the 3D models or to the hems? Are you worried about the 3D models or you are worried about? The measurements of the of the hems. Let me read it again. Let's go to know what kinds of measurements question you should ask the hem cutter. The three D model. Okay. So Damien, you are worried about three D models. I guess that you are going to be worried about the stone setting. So uh, you are going to put hems on the. You are going to set hems on the three D model. I think. So depending on the kind of. Uh, um, hem cut are you going to use for example if you are using a regular uh, round diamond cut so obvious diameter the, the size of the stone and, and one very important parameter is the height this is the culette from top to bottom this is the table where you have we have you have the the flat surface till the flat surface till this vertex this is going to be very important to know uh, about the hem because when you are putting uh, stones on a model, it's going to be very important to know if we are going to have because the hems goes more or less this deep. This this is the surface. The surface, surface, and we need to know that we have enough material here because. This is going to be okay, this is going to be wrong, and maybe probably here it's too thick. So knowing this distance from top to bottom, we know that we need to leave a little amount of material at the bottom of this of the hemstone. So it is not going to be possible to that the peak or the coolant of the hemstone is going to be very close to the border, to the border of the backside. So depending on, for example, you have a hole here. Something like this. Even with this, you need here a necessary distance between the this point and the, the external surface. So this measurement and this measurement. And of course, if you have, for example, another kind of hem cup, like a, like a hair, like this one. This one, you have one extra size. You have from top to bottom, left to right, and uh, how tall it is. And there isn't any specific distance or proportion, depending on the kind of stones are you using, depending on your hem cutter, 
your hem supplier, so it's very important to know the height of the stone. Worth literally just thinking about the distance between the culette and the external surface. Yeah. Yeah, because that, that could be the most well, it's not the most because the, the diameter, the size itself of the of the of the of the stone obviously is very important. But when you are setting, when you are putting the stone inside of the metal, it's going to be very important keeping a safety distance between the culette and the external wall. Maybe we can say here, depending on the kind of piece you are making, for example, it, it's a huge, it's a very big piece. You are going to use a lot of metal and we are talking about gold. And of course, it's going to be necessary to save as more metal as possible. And here we can have around 0.4 millimeters, but if we are talking about silver, maybe we can go till 0.6 or till 0.8 millimeter or even one millimeter because with silver, we are not so worried about the cost of the metal. But if we are thinking about casting a design with gold, this distance is going to be necessary to leave it as uh, as small as possible. And But try to don't go below, maybe, uh, I was thinking about 0.5 millimeter, maybe we can say around 0.4, 0.5 millimeter, depending on the, the kind of design and depending on the area that we are talking about, many, but it's very important this distance. Okay. Are you you are going to watch now a comment about the the sculpt off? It's going to be in September this year. I just recommend you if you want to subscribe. I'm gonna try to be there. I don't know if you're going to have time or not, but I will try to be part of the this year summit the sculpt off. So one other thing, let's uh, start sculpting. And the first thing I think we can say that that's the reason why this is could be the real bug. Use it as our main reference from many of the designs. Maybe this one, not this one. Maybe that it has longer body. And uh, we are going to start talking about this. And uh, the idea is, I'm not sure if why we are going to start thinking about using custom stones like this, or maybe enamel, or maybe a pape of different stone uh, colors, maybe a kind of custom stone cut here like this. This one looks like amethyst, maybe or lapis lazuli. I don't know the kind of that we can use or maybe this but we are going to split the body in three parts as this one what we can do is the, let's see if I'm going to turn this on I'm going to go to the draw menu from back map one click on import and I'm clicking here now I have attached the image to the floor. Let's make it smaller. More or less like this. Vertical. At this time, it's not going to be necessary to be very precise. As I was saying before, we are just designing. We are developing the design during the, the different live sessions that we are going to have here. So let's, uh, for example, Let's append uh, the sphere. Let's make it bigger. Let's extrude it like this. Let's come back to the draw menu. You know that you change the field mode from one to three. You're going to be able to see through the geometry. And my preference, uh, my personal taste about the settings is enhance factor to its maximum value and enhance opacity a little bit below the middle under the middle like this so now we are able to sculpt and to see through the geometry above uh, uh, the software that i'm using to draw on the screen is epic pen 
the name of the software Epic and this support. Epic Pen, yes, you are right, Mitchell. Thank you. And now I'm going to use the move infinity brass with symmetry on. Let's make the brass a little bit bigger. So let's try to match the different proportions more or less. So I was saying before, let's remove the backside with this good curb brass like this. And now to be able to split the sphere into three different parts i'm going to use this uh, the, the slice curve brush this is going to be the middle if we turn on the polyframe we know that we are creating two different poly groups and uh, this angle this angle so now we have here Mirror well, not this side. We need to mirror the view on the X axis, send it the left side to the right side. And now we can uh, mirror around well. Like this, let's push it to the left a little bit, like this. And now let's start merging different polygroups this polygroup and this polygroup needs to be the same ctrl w and now we have uh, outer groups and now we have something like this so we can well i think we are not going to use this one how do you remove the knife brush the knife brush well it's not that everything every single brush where you use a curb doesn't matter if it is the clip curve of the slice curve or as you said before for example the trim curve or you are using the knife curve when you are control shift and you are with the brush i'm gonna use uh, this one control shift and now you can release your left hand or your right side depending on the, the hand that you are using you can remove it but you can't remove the pen so now with the space bar you can start moving around the curve and changing the position or even if you press the alt key you can start bending the curve you can press the now the space bar and then you kind of keep moving the curve if you want you can do this with everything for example you can do this with a mask also you can paint the mask with the lasso for example uh, we are trying to create the perfect mask, but it is not in the right place. You can now the space bar and you can change the position. Now you release your pen and now you have your mask in place. So the space bar is the answer. Okay, now we are going to split groups, split, group split. I want to split them and now we have different poly groups we have this one and now we have this one and now we are going to close holes close holes close holes I don't want to use this one delete okay close holes this one and I can close for this one. Maybe I can. I'm gonna merge this two together. Merge and merge down. I have this and I have this. So this is going to be the starting point. Yeah. So you can see now the meshes are not perfect. Like this, they are very. They have a very strange topology, but I don't care about this in, at this point because. Uh, I'm going to change their size, maybe maybe something like this. Maybe this one should be taller. Let's uh, polish. Let's polish this also. Let's 
symmetry with the back face now. Because I, I was saying before, we are just sketching forms. Because we are on the designing part of the process. We are not trying to copy 100% precise anything that already exists. I'm just grabbing references and trying to see that I like them or not. So I can change it on change them during the, the process. And that's it. Maybe this view, maybe it's too tall. You know that you can use this icon to change more than one sub tool at once. Three years of ZBrush career. Yeah, this is a very yeah. Maybe it's a hidden, a hidden tip or a hidden workflow, but it's very useful. The spacebar, the spacebar, and also you can use the spacebar for more things. Let me see. Let me think. No. Yeah, you can use this. For example, when you are, for example, you are using this is very common. For example, you are using the the mask rectangle with an alpha attached in this case and you want to put the stars exactly here and you need to be very precise when you start when you are start dragging the, the square it's not necessary you can start dragging the star here and now with the space bar you can move move it and that's it so it's very useful the space bar tip okay this is going to be something like this let me change this. As I said before, I don't care now about the topology. Now the reason why I am destroying the topology like this is because I'm using the, the back face mask to add thickness to the piece. Maybe what I'm gonna do is, let me work with one for better. So I split two parts, it's going to be better. Let's remove the second one. Once this one will be perfect, I can split it. I can mirror it. So at this point, I think it's going to be easier to, to work only with one. Like this. Let me got it. So we are in the middle. Here is the middle. So let's polish it. Now we want to fix the topology. I don't need polygroups at this point. Control W. For example, here we have a, an issue here with the topology. Also, we have a mix of different kinds of topologies. And what I do is with the Sculpted Pro, I love to use a Sculpted Pro for fixing things. Like this. Once we are, I'm happy with the shape. I change the topology with the serial mixer or with your dynamics, as you prefer. So now we have a more regular shape. We can go to serial mixer. And this time, the starting point is 9,000 polygons. Maybe we can stay with the same amount of polygon. Let's click on, let's turn on same. And now we have more regular mess to work with. So we can polish it and this is going to be one part we can do the same thing with this one like this one maybe with the back face like this and now we can let's see Control w or having only one polygroup siri messer polish and now we can for reference image, what are you using? This application is pure ref. This is pure ref. It's a free application. This one. Very useful. Yeah, I'm <laughs> I'm not Andre. I know that the title of the video is wrong. I forgot to, to, to say it at the beginning of the video, at the beginning of the live, because the, the, the name of my streaming is still keep having the the name of the previous stream was Andre Sculpting. 
uh, maybe yesterday it was yesterday and i think the video will be updated maybe tomorrow or lady late today i don't know but i'm not under i'm not i'm sorry because i am not able to change the video name i will i'm, I'm going to be nice it's going to be necessary to talk with the pixology guys to be able to change the the name of the of the streaming <laughs> yeah yeah it used to happen very often it used to happen yeah <laughs> no problem no problem <laughs> no problem okay let's keep working with this let's see what i can do is uh, let's see i'm going to fix this i don't want to use the scottis pro anymore let's try to make this as more flat as possible and what i'm going to do is i'm going to use this as a boolean mess because i'm going to subtract this you can do this with different ways i'm going to try to show you another different way of course it is not my way because all of the tips already exist so maybe the the important thing is where to find them or when to to learn them as as the uh, spacebar tip for moving around curves but in this in this case one of the tips that i like to use is i select this mesh i flip it so flipping the mesh we are going to be able to work from the inside of the mesh now i click this i select this one i select the right camera angle for example this and now with this brush the c project brush if this is a very old brush we can start projecting the mess one mess against the other so the effect that we are having is a kind of boolean subtraction like this but both messes fits perfectly now you can see how they fit maybe and this is another maybe it's a quick uh, we can call this a quick way to creating false or fake booleans so during the designing process or the sketching process it's very useful because it's not necessary to start playing with different icons saying to zebras i want to create a boolean waiting for the boolean result and and so on so you can use this tip or this process I don't like to call them tip because sounds like I have invented what I'm doing. I, as I said before, I didn't invent it. I'm just learned from another artist. Like this. And now we can come back to this mess and flip it again. And maybe we can create a safety space between both. Like this. And now we have uh, this. Yeah, you are right. You are right, Tatum. It happens a lot of times. Sometimes not. But depending on if they are paying attention or not, or changing the the video title or not. I sure that tomorrow is going to be updated. Or maybe at the day, at the day, at the end of the day, today. Now we can mirror and weld like this. Let's uh, polish this a little bit more. This is a brush that I use a lot. The polish brushes, H polish brush. <laughs> Yeah, creating this kind of space and let me cut this like this something like this is going to be enough so let's start working on the head is as we are creating a dual repeat uh, we said that this is going to be the piece that I, we are having on the screen now is from top to bottom it is 
15, almost 15 and a half millimeter. So we are creating an object this side. You can see as how thin it is. So we should think about it during the sculpting process when we are designing jewelry pieces. Keep in mind how big it is in real life. Um, that means that uh, we are creating small things, sometimes tiny things. That means that we don't be very worried about the amount of detail that we are sculpting. I prefer to stay focused on the, the big shape or the main shapes instead of a start to sculpting. For example, this kind of peaks, the small peaks that the real bug has here. Um, so, and we are, even if we are creating a jewelry piece, it's a good habit to start thinking about simplifying forms like this. Looks like a head, but it is not very detailed. I don't know how big is this. Maybe it could, could be bigger than mine. Maybe I found here one example. Let me make a quick search. Oh, this one. I love this piece because it's simple and effective. So you can see the, the different arms, the head, the body, and the other the upper body, the lower body, and that's it. So I'm, we are going to try to replicate or to create something so small like this one. Maybe this one could be, yeah, around 20, 20 millimeter because the stones could be around one, 1.5 millimeter. The total height could be around 20 or 25 millimeter, like the design that we are creating. So we are not, what I want to say is we are not, we are not creating a, an anatomical perfect or canonic uh, perfect. The scatter for beetle body. We are creating a jewelry design, so we we need to be focusing more on the size and how easy it's going to be to manufacture, to cast, to print, and so on. So let's grab now the this brush with a sphere. The sphere we are going to use this sphere as a head. Split mass points. Let me find a good reference for a head this one the shape of this one is good or maybe this one I think this one is the main head with the two eyes on the sides which we can use as stones on the eyes maybe it could be cool and also I like this shape that it has on the neck so I'm gonna grab this Let's add a new design element to the upper body. Creating something like this. going to be here maybe it could be a pattern like this you can change the shape you can create the necessary spaces for the for the eyes on the back we will try to keep it flat as the body with the clip curve for example like this um, maybe it's going to be enough. Maybe we can create. Uh, I'm gonna add with the curve, curve tube snap. We're creating. I love this. We're having here kind of a mouth. Like this for making the head more interesting. So this maybe we can make it longer like this like this now we can make it thicker you know you can see that i'm using the the back face mask many times during the process to add thickness 
So now we have this topology, a mix of different kind of uh, polygons, so zero measure. So now we can have more something more regular now. Let me check your questions. Okay, no more questions. Okay, so we'll keep working. So we can change now the shape, more or less, as I was saying before. With this, the color. And what I'm going to do is, uh, we're having to start having more interesting shapes. So let's wrap this with a mask. Just uh, push down this. Yes, looks nice. And we're gonna start polishing this a little bit. Like this. Maybe the head needs to be more inside of the body. Like this. Not too much because the eyes, if not, we're gonna have problems with the eyes. So we can put two different, two small spheres to see how they work. As the eyes, it could be a too little uh, kind of uh, stones, I don't know, garnets. Uh, Okay, so let's keep working. And uh, mm, I forgot to do this. This is one thing that I like about the Beatles is this thing in the middle of the body that it has some kind of diamond shape in the middle. Maybe it's going to be good if we start thinking about add this element to the design. Let's, uh, for example, something like this, like this, and now mirror well. Now we have the necessary space there. Uh, we can uh, we can add there the necessary shape. Okay, let's. Maybe it needs to be closer. Mm -hmm. Maybe having this reference means that uh, the kind of the shoulders, they are not the shoulders, but we can do this, do this, and maybe this part could be smaller, like this. 
this one could be here. Okay, let's save at this point. And next step is, I like, this is very recurrent or very common element when we are talking about Egyptian uh, scarabs, which uh, where they have this stone on top. You can see kind of a stone here, a stone here. I have like this, the this shape of the wings, this distribution, I like this one. This because it's not so common, but I change I decide to change. That's the reason why I I put this image here, because the idea that I have is to instead of create that traditional or regular uh, beetle on the scarab Egyptian thing where we can find the wings with this distribution, with this distribution, with this one, or even with this one. I like how it works like this. It could be a kind of a mix of Art Deco and Egyptian art, something a kind of to try to combine the two different ideas. Uh, Hamid said, is the polygon matter when I, th no, doesn't matter. Okay, it it matter when you are sending your models to the software which con that controls the 3D printer. It's not the same sending to the, to the software. One million polygons than half of a million or a quarter of a million. But in terms of uh, weight of the file, so try to don't send too dense messages to the printer. But in terms of detail it doesn't matter because you know at the end of the sculpting process you are going to be able to decimate your your mess with the disk plugin with the decimation master so we can go we can come from three million five millions and we can have 500k or 500 500 polygon with the same amount of detail so and at the end of the process it doesn't matter the polygon is it's important during the sculpting process when when you are the file, the model is done, is ready for production or is ready for printing. It doesn't matter because you need to decimate it first because send it to the to the printer. So the idea that I have is create some some wings, something like this. This side, or maybe putting the beetle here more here creating something like this trying to grab this idea with this kind of uh, distribution with this with this kind of thing like this like this like this something like this Something with this radial symmetry because this could be a curvature. Here we can use a radial symmetry. Something like this. With the necessary shape. Still getting the. Having something, something like this, with the with the same thing in the other side. So having a kind of beetle, maybe with the with the legs here, with the legs here. Maybe we can put uh, an extra stone here. Maybe we can make the wings a little bit longer, if necessary. Something something like this to try to break the traditional, uh, the regular, maybe we, as I said before, a combination of Art Deco style and Egypt, Egyptian. Let's see. Ah, oh, you're Egyptian. Perfect. It's great. So I'm, so I'm trying to create some of your most, uh, Famous or common jewelry pieces. 
and, and I really appreciate that I, you like my work. So to start sketching things, because the first thing that I see here is we start from, because I like, I like the idea and put this note. Uh, I like the idea. Let me make this bigger. Like this. I like the idea that uh, we have this bottom part as well. So we can put something like this, like the wings with a kind of radial symmetry here. And at some point it start growing and start growing, 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 growing like this till having this kind of shape with the beetle in the middle, something like this, instead of the traditional wings that will be more with more rounded distribution. So let's see how it works like this. So, 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 so let's start thinking about maybe it's going to be good if we start thinking about the start making gaps or NML. So we are thinking about NML. It's going to be necessary to start creating a kind of a box. If we are going to create something like this. So this is going to be something like the box with a, with a cavity here. So when we is going to be necessary to have here a cavity around 0.6 millimeter depth. So we maybe if we split this into something like this. The wings or this kind of feathers that we have here at the bottom, they can be almost the same size. And from here and above, they start growing and changing the orientation of the position. So, so we can use this for create or making this. We can use the array mesh. Here we can use the array mesh method. It's going to save us a lot of time, I think. So let's see. So let's grab, let's append the uh, cylinder. Let's move it down. No, you, the cylinder. Let's rotate it 90 degrees. Let's uh, make it bigger, make it longer. Something like this. This could be thinner. It's going to be at the bottom or less here. Let's see, we have enough space from left to right. We are having two and a half millimeter, 2.6 almost millimeter. I'm reading the measurements here on the top. Let's see that it is, they are visible. No, they are not visible. So I'm taking measurements from left to right or from point to point, and I'm reading the result here. Because it's hidden by the the top ribbon that I have here. Let me right. Well, maybe some of you don't know this. You can you need to watch here. So now when I am taking measurements from left to right, now I am having here you can read two point four eight five millimeter. So thinking about that here this is going to be something like this this distance should be around 0.6 millimeter around 0.6 maybe we can have 0 0.5 0 0.55 0 0.65 around 0.6 millimeter that means that uh, uh, if we start taking measurements from point to point this is 0.8 millimeter it could be a little bit thinner. I think it's realistic what we are doing. So we can keep this shape because what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this portion. I'm going to push this up to change the shape of the wing. And now with the taper inside of the gizmo, taper, we can taper it. And maybe 
I don't want to use this axis. Maybe like this is going to be good enough. Let's make it thinner and let's see now. I don't worry about the topology now. So, so 0.65 millimeter is going to be something. So that means that uh, what I'm going to do now, changing the topology, first step, group by normals. And now, theory measure, give me same amount of polygons. Keep the groups and don't smooth the groups. So I'm gonna, yeah. Well, I forgot to turn on the symmetry. Turn on the symmetry and now see the Now we have the regular. Let's see from left, right to left. 0.6 could be around here in the middle. So now we can grab the C modeler, the slide, it's looped complete, and now we can. Make it thinner. 0.57 millimeter. That's something like this. And now we can. Uh, what we can do? We can create a new polygroup here. And this is going to be the gap for the M. And now we can uh, Q mass. Polygroup all, push this down, and I start taking measurements because the gap height should be around 0.6 millimeter as well. So here we are having 0.57, a little bit more, 0.6 millimeter. So now we'll start getting some kind of realistic element. So same new. Polymers. Now let's start polishing like this, and now we are having the shape that we need as a starting point. But once we are happy with the with the design, maybe we're gonna start thinking about to start refining things, making measurements more perfect. But at this point, I'm just investigating, um, trying developing an idea, so I'm not very worried about. Yeah, at this point, not. I'm. I was. I'm worried about the measurement because I was controlling the measurement before. But I try to don't be so picky and so precise with the measurements. So now it's time to start using the array mesh. Array, where are you? Array mesh. Uh, how to measure distance in zebras? Yeah, you can start taking measurement. I don't know if have you been watching what I was making before with the transpose line. The answer of your for your question is use the transpose line. You can you know that you can use the transpose line turning this off or using the Y from the keyboard. You can use the gizmo or the transpose. And now you can start taking measurements. For example, if I need to know how big is this distance. From this point to this point so i start releasing the transpose line from point to point and i can read it on my top left corner now here i'm having 1.271 millimeter 1.3 millimeter around 1.3 1.25 millimeter so but don't forget when you are releasing when you are to start creating your transpose line always keep pressed the shift key. This is the only way that you know that the line is 100% straight from point to point. Another good thing is the transpose line. You can see where are my vertices. You can you can magnetize. You can see when you just almost reach the end, you can see whoop, I think like kind of magnetic thing with all of the vertex. So you can start taking measurements from vertex vertex to vertex. From this point to this point, this is 0.4 millimeter, 0 0.48, 0 0.4, I think 0.5 millimeter. If I want to know how thick is this, from this point to this point, here we're having 1.5 millimeter. 
If I want to know, for example, a good question that could be a good question. I, I want to know the distance between the base and the external wall. The only way, or at least as far as I know, to do this is flip the mesh. And now you can take the distance from this point to this point. Now we are having 0.7 millimeters, so it's going to be enough in terms of uh, metal uh, uh, amount. So, but if you want to make it thicker, you can grab any of the masks. You can grab this one, and now you can make it thicker in, if necessary. So you can start taking the new measurement from point to point, 0.8 millimeter, so it's better. And from, from this point to this point, now I'm having point, uh, Point, uh, point 0.8 millimeter enough for an ml. So now you can we can flip it back again and now we can keep working. And I'm missing out on not learning transpose tool, transpose line. Yeah. The transpose line we can call the transpose line instead of from now. Instead of transpose line, the ruler where you can take measurements from point to point. The ruler, yeah. We're moving. No, we are not moving anything. Or we are taking measurements. We are just creating a line between two points. Yeah, the transpose line is the ruler. It's the only way that you can inside of Zebras at this point where you are able to take measurements from point to point and for when you are creating jewelry it's very very important to know the measurements during the design and the sculpting process it's not a matter of creating beautiful things or good sculptures it needs to be consistent in terms of uh, printing, casting, polishing stone setting so the measurements are very important are very important but i don't like to be very picky about the measurements i don't care about if I, if i'm having 0 0.5 millimeter 0 0.52 0 0.53 for me it is still 0 0.5 millimeter when i'm reaching 0 0.6 if i'm getting 0 0.58 maybe i can start thinking about 0 0.6 millimeter but in terms of the manufacturing process it's not so important having 0.55 down 0.5, depending on the kind of metal or manufacturing system, but my conclusion is they are not so, so important as you think. Uh, what is the best way to retopology or remesh for hard surfaces? See remesher always. See remesher good for organics, but not for hard surfaces, depending on the kind of method are you, use, you are using. I'm thinking to use Topagon, but there are a lot of enough tutorials. Depending on the kind of, for example, if we're talking because my mind thinks about, three, always about 3D printing. I haven't got knowledge about video games, animation, or that kind of stuff. I'm always thinking about 3D printing and manufacturing processes. So if we are talking about manufacturing processes, you can create our surface stuff with sculpting brushes like the H polish with the trim, uh, uh, trim brush, H polish brush, uh, the polish brush. It's like uh, you are having a block of material, you start sending the material with a file, with a knife and creating things that looks like a robotic or a car or whatever. Because the, um, the final purpose of the file is going to be a 3D printer. If we are talking about topology for video games and animation, so maybe it's going to be better to start thinking about topology, to start drawing your polygons and so on. And there is a reference to red topology. That's a lot of work. Why are you thinking that it is a lot of work? For example, for example, I'm going to create you here an example. A good example about this could be because I was uh, I was 
making this shape from a cylinder, right? But for example, if I want to create this shape, only one, only one feather, right? Not the bunch of the uh, one, two, three, four, five feathers. So this could be something uh, hard surface, right? You can do this. You can, I can grab the plane. For example, let me change the, the I'm going to change the, uh, I'm going to save this. And now I'm going to change the, the image. Like this, maybe I can uh, adjust it. I'm going to use only one. Something like this. And uh, where is my, my buck is here. Maybe I can start changing the size. This is going to be very useful in terms of a good help in terms of design. This is what I was thinking about before. What I was trying to to drawing to draw on the on the on the screen. So let's make it bigger. Let's see how it works. Oops, I don't want to rotate it. What I did to the, the angle. And a vertical light. Yeah, I was thinking something about like this, maybe bigger. This is what I have in mind. Maybe not so long, the wings. Let's see. Maybe like this is... Maybe the wings are very, very big. Maybe something, more or less something like this, right? Now what I can do now is uh, let's make the plane, let's duplicate because remember that I was using this plane as a reference because this, I know that this plane is 25 millimeter tall. So that's the reason why I, I prefer to keep it safe. Like this. And now, for example, you can start using maybe the brush that Sonat was referring to. Oh, yeah, no, Jair 89. There is a brush for retopology. I think that the brush you are talking about is this brush. Is this brush? Is the topology brush, right? Because it's the topology brush. And with the topology brush, you're gonna start painting polygons. You're gonna start painting one poly, one line, another line, right? I'm gonna start with one feather. You're gonna start crossing lines, so we we'll start creating polygons. That's it. So easy. So I can now create a new line and now I have the necessary topology. If I need more polygons, of course, here to start creating the curve, I can start creating this. When you're having when you're happy with the results, paper tapping on the surface, you have the necessary physical topology. Now we can split mass points. And now from this point we're gonna start using the the modeler or whatever method that you like. Or you can change the topology 100% with the Siri measure. But with this, you can start creating changing topology. Like this. And now we have the necessary piece or the feather for one feather. Now it's going to be necessary to create a new one, then the other one, the other one, and so on. But this is a very useful brush to paint topology. And the good thing about this brush, because I, that's the reason why I started from a plane. I was painting the topology on a plane. That's the reason why I have a 100% straight uh, feather. But uh, for example, you have, um, I'm looking for to start creating kind of robotic uh, uh, beetle or scarab. What you can do is uh, with the same brush. Where are you? Here. Let's see what we do. You can start painting here your topology. Something like this. It's very important to start always to cross the lines. Okay, so crossing the lines in the middle. So don't try to do this connecting vertices. So you want to create a, I want to create an, an square. It's much better to do this instead of try to do this. Mm -mm -mm. Oof. 
I press the world button. So now you can start crossing your lines. The reason why I'm having problem here is because here we have this is wrong. You can the lines start here ends here. Then we have two different lines. To remove lines, press the Alt and cross the line so you can remove them, the ones that you don't want to use, and now you can cross them again. And now, for example, let's uh, let's cross this with this. You're gonna start crossing. And for example, you can make this longer and now you can start creating up you can just start having this or from this point and the good thing is that you are having this adapt to the curve of the base mass so this is very handy for example to start sketching the, your 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 figure your character or your surface and now at, at any point you can start drawing and from this point you can start uh, using uh start creating a hard surface with polygons so for example at this point we can group by normals creased and now when you are you we get into dynamic mode you can start getting something that looks like very hard surface looking pieces and now you're going to start working with the polygons for, for example i don't know maybe i don't know if you are familiar or not with the c modeler for example i can create a here a new polygroup i can extrude the polygroup and now we can start creating the kind of style that i'm looking for more like a hard surfaces looking thing instead of more organic Perfect, cool. Okay, it, it's really handy for hard surface. Yeah, but it's a lot of work. If you want to have it nicely. What do you mean about nicely? About a good topology, a perfect topology? I think maybe not because you are drawing the topology. So you are putting the topology where you want. So once if you are not happy with the, of course, you are painting the lines manually. Maybe they are not 100% straight. They are not perfect. But at this point, it's just a matter of fixing things. For example, with the mask, I can mask this vertex. I can invert the mask. I can put it, change it here and put it here or even change here. So with this, it's just a matter of start managing the different vertices for example i don't know for example this one it is not perfect you can fix this like this or you can use it with a c modeler you're going to start fixing vertices or for example you can slide the slide it's look complete you're going to start sliding for example in this case hasn't too much sense but you can start sliding or you add you can add more geometry you want inserting more sides like this here or like this like this changing for example here adding a new polygroup here changing something like this so it is very easy to fix i think everything takes work the amount of work that we it looks like more aztec aztec now like uh, than egyptian and so uh, let's hide this let's come back to here and let's like this so i think anything is taking a lot of work it's just a matter of time maybe because always we are thinking about to put the less amount of time as possible but, but sometimes or maybe i can say most of the time the, the time is necessary because there isn't any magical uh, process which creates things in seconds or in less minutes that uh, we need maybe i think it's a matter of time so. or having good things of course okay that's it i guess you know you are creating that's a matter of time that you are putting on 
what you are doing because you love what you are doing. So the time flies, you know, when you are a sculptor and you are creating, making things that you like. Uh, okay, we were trying to create use a ray mess. Okay, okay. So turn on ray mess. So I want to rotate it to one axis, which axis to this axis. But you can see it rotates from its center. So it's necessary to take two more steps. So lock the position and reset the pivot point. Now we are going to be able to start creating this. Um, mm -hmm. 360 degrees. How many in instances of repetitions we want? Something like this. Yep, something like this, right? And the good thing about array mess is that we are rendering the result. We are not managing or we are not ha ha uh, using uh, real polygons. This is just a rendering. We are just rendering the results. So something would be something like this. And we said we are going to remove the top part. So let's see. Maybe it could be more. Or maybe where we can do this. Let's grab. Ah, uh, you like this blur mask. Good enough. Yes. I like it. Maybe you know so angle. Maybe something like this. Keep this. This is going to be the ray mess. Let's uh, uh, ray. Uh, right there. Uh, let's make a duplicate. Let's keep this safe, just in case we need to come back and repeat it for any reason. At this point, let's keep making what we are having and uh, maybe this one this thing needs to be longer because I think it's going to be better to make this part longer to cover this gap we are having here mm. yeah maybe it's going to be necessary to make them longer maybe now less repetitions now about 29 let's see how it worked with 27 26 yeah 25 yeah much better needs to be even longer yeah more or less like this and thinner top. Hmm. 
let's put 24 24 and bigger okay like this uh, Damien, I will say you can correct me if I'm wrong, but so hard the best special to be purple hard surface with Siri Messer is splitting. Yeah, I think in, based from my experience, because as I was saying before, uh, normally I'm not very worried about the topology, but what I need for any reason, a uh, precise topology, I think the best way to control the Siri Messer behavior is the using groups. Yes always with groups and very important and you are having groups to start playing with these two settings smooth groups and adaptive size so you will get very different results when you are playing with both settings still having what you are looking for or creased edges if necessary but i prefer to use polygroups instead of increased edges i think it's the best because all Exist a brush called um, uh, Silver Messer Guides. This one, where you can tell to see brush. For example, if I come back here, no, to here, to the body. For example, if we are looking for a specific flow, this is a brush where you can tell to see brush the path for the new mess of the new topology. With this you can paint your your topology like this you're looking for for example for having a loop here on the top what i did so having a loop here so that could be a good way to, to another way to tell to zebra but this method is not very effective sometimes but sometimes works well. So now we can uh, the same amount. So you can see Zebras tries to follow, let's say, how he's trying to follow the path. Now we have a very good result, I think. Now this, and now I have the topology that I was looking for. A kind of a loop here on the top, following all of the loops in this direction and in this direction. Could be another solution for you to use the or another method that uh, we were talking about before is to start using polygroups for example uh, you can paint a polygroup here like this and uh, start painting polygroups with a mask right so let's remove this control no, i'm going to make it Something. Control W, Control W, Control W, and here on the bottom, Control W. You have different polygroups, and now you can theory measure, keep the groups. Adaptive size means that Zbrush is going to try to give you as more squares, shapes as possible of the polygons. So Siri Messer, and now you're having the, the same flow. Half, half. Now you're having a new new topology with this. Because you can see that Zebras is trying to follow the different polygroups, uh, borders, limits. And, and from this point, I think it's going to be possible to start creating UVs and whatever that you need. Okay, something like this looks nice. I'm gonna remove this. Let's keep this as a backup duplicate. And now we need to uh, make the mess. And now we are having real polygons. I want to remove from here and above. So green and new without the back face mask. 
So what I can do is now select the one that I want to delete with the shift. Delete hidden and they are gone. So now, now we have only the ones that we want to use. Okay, so let's duplicate this because I want to delete the others because from this point it's going to be necessary to change, start creating. to be helpful for you. Maybe it's gonna be necessary to change now to shape the shape a little bit. start making different rays still having uh, yeah I'm going to be here till eight my at my eight of course we are having yet 34 minutes I'm used to be here for two hours once a month Lately, once a month, but I'm gonna be trying in the future to be twice a month, if possible. To be streaming two times during the month, but today, lately, I have been streaming for two hours. So maybe I can duplicate this. I'm gonna get rid of. Uh, this one and just for see where I need the this That's a matter of groups by normals again and Siri measure the same double double again. No. Oops, something wrong is happening here. Why not now? Okay. Something is just a matter to repeat the the Siri measure and it gives you good results. It is not a straight. We can fix this with a clip curve. Fix it here, clip here, and now it's straight again. will have a lot to come back. Okay, no problem. I wish you the same. And thank you very much for being here for today. So let's uh, let's see how it works. Something. 
maybe um, this needs to be let's use this again i'm going to, i want to move you and you going to be better if we want we need to check how tall is is it now with the transpose line here we have a thickness total thickness of nine millimeter let me see i think we still have more room or make it thicker a little bit maybe we can reach 10 millimeters if necessary maybe we have we can have two or one mill extra millimeter if necessary to add more elements okay at this point don't be making repeating repeating the same thing so i'm gonna just sketch the part of the wing let's send it to the center let's make it smaller it's to be more something like this and you I was making it too big I think let's see how it works like this maybe just for start sketching the the wings you can use this brush this is a brush that i love how it works i use it very often for many different purposes is the curve where are you uh, let me this down it is called curve tri fill where are you this one where we can paint geometry like this just for us catching split mass points the wind here and maybe if they are not just completely straight we can use the clip brush something like this mirror well just for checking what we are doing because we are just just sketching things maybe they are too long maybe they can be something like this maybe wider something like this needs to be a little bit angle this from this view to my designing processes even like creating a puzzle when always i am stacking or using different pieces on different elements to see how they work together like this let's save it and now it's time for example to start thinking about more elements yes we can see we can check the silhouette if we want if we go to preferences or we turn on the thumbnail we can see here how the silhouette is working i think it's good balance maybe the wings are too tall yet like this maybe it's going to be necessary to cover the gap we're having here on the sides of the head maybe we are not have for some kind of antenna or or the legs something like this where it can hold the stone in the center let's append the cylinder this, this we can add here on the stone here This will be the bezel or 
the part of metal which holds uh, the stone and now we can uh, let's grab a bc curve brush curve multi tubes with the symmetry start thinking about the legs something like this Let's see, let me check how I can do the legs. Not very detailed, but I like this reference with this kind of organic shapes that we're having here for the legs. Okay, let's split mass points. We can start closing the We can start using the Sculptist Pro to start sketching. Okay, this thing needs to be here more. Like this. Let's see how thin is this. We are creating a piece of metal of 1.4 millimeter. I think it's going to be strong enough to be safe. That is not going to be easy to break. We can make it thicker in this view. Like this. Let's in place more or less like this maybe we can make this things a little bit bigger let's uh, duplicate mirror on the x y axis yep we can use the same the same uh, message for the legs but i'm not sure it's going to need legs I think not going to be necessary to add legs. I think I like how it ends with this curve at the bottom. Maybe what we can do is... I'm going to use the new brushes, anchor brushes. Very useful for this kind of thing. So if we want to rotate from this point to this point. I can... Whoop, I can rotate it this way. If I change, for example, from this point to this point, it's going to be very useful. Sometimes it's going to be necessary to add a mask. No, from this point to this point. And now with the move brush, we can. Hmm. I don't, I'm not sure what I'm doing, but uh, let me see if we put them here. Mm -hmm. I don't like it. If we put them here, it's just to, to put. Something like legs, but they are not real legs. Just for adding two more design elements. Yeah, maybe. No, I don't like it. Let me put them here. Let's see how they work. 
No, I don't like it. I think it breaks the flow at the bottom. Let me see if I make them shorter like this. And I put it, put them here. Something like this. Maybe it works better. Don't forget to visit the link attached from the comments about uh, this year the sculpt off. I think you can win a lot of prizes. If I have time, I'm going to make my submission. I don't know if on the dates I'm going to be able to be streaming, but uh, I will try. Okay, we are let's start getting something. It's still a lot to do, but we we'll start having interesting form, I think. In the next streaming, we will we'll be spending more time. I think if I have time, my free time, I will make more progress. So maybe in the next streaming, I will have it more advanced. So we're about to finish. Still have 15 minutes. Just in case you are having <clears throat> more questions. Or opinions. I think maybe I can make it more rounded. Rounded shape. Let's see if I make this smaller. No. It doesn't work. Maybe I can change the shape. Let's just start checking the different references we're having here. More taper it in the top. I still don't like the bottom legs something like this let's start I'm gonna insert here in a sphere make it bigger this with the symmetry I forgot to turn on the symmetry most of the time let's uh, remove the back side let's 
maybe we should start thinking about if we are gonna use stone custom stone here but as we as I'm still not happy with with the shape of the beetle I think it hasn't sense to think about about it till we are we will be 100% happy with the with the shape of the body before go ahead and I start thinking about how to set the stones on how to work on in more elements I think like this is start looking better change a bit the position of the eyes I think they will need to be more visible from the front from the front view they will be here instead let's fix this the sculptors pro maybe like this will be better maybe now the job or the mouth is too big okay maybe like this it's better than before like this maybe the circle I'm gonna merge two meshes together. You and you will be more here. So here we can change. Says mm -hmm. okay, let's where can we move on? Hey, Ranajit or I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing your name well. Mm -hmm. Okay, something. I'm still not happy with this shape. Or even with the with this with the head more inside and this could be more here. 
Maybe we can create a, a scar up without arms or without or without legs. It's got to look a little bit strange because I have seen some that uh, doesn't. them uh, some kind of arms to, to, let's try to find an ideas mm -hmm. <laughs> look at this <laughs> very cool okay Maybe the problem is the, the idea that I was having about combining. But if I try to, let's see, I'm still thinking about to make it more rounded. If I grab these two pieces, something like this, with the head now more here. And now if I put more here in the middle and here I'll make it longer. Close it together. Because as I was saying before, I was trying to create a, a new version of the the Egyptian bill design so I was trying to find something new or something interesting to try a combination of uh, I like this one yeah I like this one more than before hmm. Let's see. And then make it bigger again. Oops. Yes, I think because I think like this works better. And from the bottom legs, if I try to just to add the insinuation of. of the legs yeah what do you think well works better now I'm trying to don't miss any of your comments or your question. Okay, no comments, no questions, so keep working. So let's make this. <laughs> hasn't sense this. Let's do it. 
maybe we can try to add kind of antennas. Maybe they are going to be very thin. Maybe if I change the shape of the head more triangular. This. Let's uh, close this gap. Again, I'm going to repeat. I have been repeating the same thing all over and over on today's stream. Just saying that I am just uh, making a sketch. Once I will be happy with uh, what I'm having, maybe it's going to be time to start thinking about the, the production model, the manufacturing. So I start thinking about what kind of materials are we are going to use uh, if the if the design is going to be necessary to have any kind of assembling to start thinking about to start separating different parts and if so if we start splitting the model into different parts we should be uh, start thinking about the assembling system how to attach the different parts together but at this point, I'm just uh, making a sketch. That's the reason why it looks like a many, most of the thing hasn't any sense in terms of everything is, is floating in the air, but you can see the back part is not uh, solved again, still. But uh, I think we will be we will have time on future streamings for that to start. I will try to explain the set, um, how to create assembling parts, the stone setting because maybe we can start thinking about to create a pave here to put many stones here or for example here where we can do something like this I'm thinking about to create something like this let's add more thickness here more thickness here let's uh, without this cottage pro let's see if it is a, a good idea of, or not let's see how it works let's make a quick Test. For example, let's grab this brush. Maybe it could be a good idea for having stones here, for example. Maybe it could be, can be good. Let's Split, split hidden, maybe trying to do make it though. Let's change the, the material, be loved it. I was using this material before. No. I was using this material. Good. So try for making the necessary space for the stone setting to don't make it too thick. Maybe it could be, yeah, I think it, it could work, this detail, so I put in more stones. I think it's gonna work.
I don't like to use the H polish brush with the with the Scottish Pro. For example, we can add the stones there. So if we like the idea, we're gonna start now think start thinking about the stone setting, the necessary space, we start thinking about the prongs, start thinking about thicknesses, and stuff like this necessary for the stone setting. But uh, we are just uh, sketching. Or here, for example, I've seen that um, they can have this kind of spines. For example, let's see how it works. Something like this. Next, mm -hmm. uh, the beginning detail of, of, the, of the bottom are the wings of the beetle, so it had sense that the legs don't appear. Yeah, I think in this case, I think in this case, in the in this design, the this, the legs and the arms they are not so important. Maybe here, see, because it gives you the idea that it is holding the the sphere on this on or the stone on top. But the other legs, they are not so so important. I'm agree that uh, in, sometimes, as I said before, it's not necessary to start to be thinking about uh, anatomical correct uh, insect. So it's just to know to for having interesting forms and shapes like this at the bottom that you can see these two little legs could be the legs, they are folded, but I think it looks nice at the bottom. I think like this, it's going to look good. Maybe here we can put a different stone color. We already have one pearl, something like this, material, the object. Or having to start checking how the colors and the contrast works. Nothing is starting looking good in in terms of shape. And for the if we start thinking about how it's going to work as a pendant, maybe we can. We can attach the loops here on the back. So as a pendant, maybe they can be here more. Maybe they can be hidden on the back. We can put them here. the wrong I need to remove this one and the, 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 the hide points delete hidden and now we are with for having something like this where the core is going to hang from here as a or use it as a pendant and on the back once we have the back fix, fix it, we will have here the needle here with the system. So it's going to be possible to wear it 
as a pendant or as a brooch. So it will be. So that's the idea. And for that, maybe it's going to be useful for having this kind of concave shape here because the needle will be here will be from this point to this point. So the, the design remains flat when the pendant is laying on the chest. So maybe it's going to be a good idea to, for having here an air or empty space for putting the needle on the back. Okay, so we are done for today. We are done. Let me show you some links. You can see here on the bottom, you can find my, my link tree. If we go, you go to my link tree, you will find all of the links to my website. You can type in link tree, and it's link l i n k t r dot e e slash Nacho Riesco, where you will uh, get access to my courses about jewelry design. You will get access to different articles that I have published on internet about, in this case, about Keyshot. Uh, you will find my Photoshop tutorials, my website, my ArtStation profile, my YouTube channel, my Instagram. On my YouTube channel, you will be able to find all of my old videos about jewelry design and cheap brush which I was streaming on the Zebras Live channel. You will get access to my Twitter, my Behance, LinkedIn, DeviantArt, Pinterest, and so on. So I will, I'm gonna leave it on the chat for you, just in case you are interested in following me and checking what I'm doing, what I did in the past. And I strongly recommend you to take a look to the next live sculpt of, of Zebras on the next uh, Zebra Summit. We, it will be do, 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 running from September 28th till October 1st. And the sculpt off will be do, 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 in September, maybe the, at the beginning of the event, maybe it will start, it will be on the 28th. I think you will have time to the 25th of September for job submissions. So it's time to make your calendar for the Zebra Summit. Here you have all of the information about the Zebra Summit. Da, 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 da. Right here, team with compensation. Now we should get participants for this cup top. So you will have till September 25th. 12 a.m. Pacific Easter time. So uh, just write your name, your email address, and your channel of YouTube, Twitch. You will be able to be part of the next uh, C-Russ's Cup Talk. And that's it. So thank you everybody for tuning in, for being here watching what I was making. On my next stream, we, I will keep putting, putting more time on this design. Hope you have enjoyed the, the stream of today and hope to see you here maybe the next month at the end of September maybe I will be here again and if not early in the beginning of October and I will be more than happy if all of you will be here again and to all of you that are going to watch the video on the Pixelogic YouTube channel, you can leave your comments on the on the comments box below. Ask whatever you want and whatever you need about jewelry design, and I will be pay us more attention to answer your questions and your comments. So thank you everybody. Bye. See you soon. Goodbye. <laughs>